Kia ora kato. welcome to another edition of the Hot Air Sports Podcast with me, Maka, and me good mate, Mahona. Still stuck up there in Auckland, pal? It ain't changing anytime soon by the looks of things, mate. I'm feeling a little bit fatigued. I was just telling you, feeling like um, I'm running a marathon on a treadmill sort of thing. Yeah. You know? I'm just sort of just going on and on and on. The view stays the same, yep. Yep. except at least in a marathon, you've got an end in sight. I don't know when this end in sight is. But it's always better. I always know each uh, each mile marked is marked by a Friday morning when I do the Hot Air Sports podcast. So I know I'm going to be fine once I get to that mile mark, mate. And here I am, mile number, right, whatever mile right. we're at. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, there's been some great baseball over the last week or so, hasn't there? Wow. Mate, stuff I've never seen on a baseball field happening, man. Stuff yeah. that I've, you know, even the commentators saying, you know, they'll be watching 50, 60 years Stuff that you just thought there wasn't a rule for that. What what's the ruling? Yeah. Um, that just proves what a great game baseball is. We'll get all to that, all onto that when we got the baseball thing. Absolutely. And you've got the uh and you've got the review of the uh Yankees finishing yes, their done, season I've as done well. Done a bit of a rundown on uh on the Yankees woes and um how they're gonna fix them, or I think I've got a few ideas on how I'd fix them. Yeah, um, but I'm sure something completely different will happen at Yankee Stadium um over the next few weeks and months but um we'll have a have a bit of a look at that yeah, anyway yeah. we've got the big issues back this week and yeah. i think probably the biggest issue going around at the moment is the uh palaver going on about brooklyn nets basketball star kyrie irving huge story he's well. protected by god and so many people good luck with that <laughs> um because of his stance it was taught that he may be the first part-time nba star and play just mm. road games as a mandate by the state government requires professional athletes uh, playing for a team in the city have to be vaccinated against COVID-19 to play or practice in public venues, as he will be unable to travel interstate to states with the same mandate. However, Nets Kiwi GM Sean Marks says that's now off the table. Uh, Kyrie's made it clear that he has a choice in this matter, and it's ultimately going to be up to him what he decides. Uh, Marks went on to say, we respect the fact that he has a choice, he can make his own even can make up his own mind, and right now, what's best for the organisation is the path that we're taking without him. Yeah, the first thing you got to put the first thing you got to remember is what a massive star Kyrie Irving is. Okay, yeah. so he's not like a bit part player; he's one of the biggest stars in the NBA. He's a great yeah. player. So um, we're not just talking about any bit part player here. So they were going to make allowances for him to play during the games that he plays in New York. He would not be traveling out of state. Oh, uh, or is it the other way around? Other way around. Other way around. He was going to play out of state, but he couldn't play in state if he wasn't double vaccinated. Um, and now they've just said, look, this is all just too difficult. Let's just stop it there. If you don't go to double vaccinate, you can't be a part-time player. You can't be any player. Um Great call by Sean Marks, in my opinion, mate. You, you yep. just can't do anything about it. The protection of people is way more important than anything in sport, regardless of how big the star is. Uh, it could be LeBron James. It won't matter. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. There's not one rule for one and another rule for everyone else. And mm. um, yeah, I noticed, uh, I noticed this morning that Kyrie Irving stated on his Instagram feed mm. that he remained unvaccinated. That um, wasn't made aware earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and he called the decision a personal choice that was made without political motivations. Mm -hmm. But the other th one that got me earlier in the week, and it's something that really gets my goat, mm -hmm. Irving said earlier in the week, he isn't anti-vax. He is anti-people losing their jobs because they're not vaxxed. So, yeah, well, Kyrie, it's either time to get yourself off the high horse and that's... either play ball or walk away. That's like saying I'm not anti-pregnancy, but I'm anti-wearing a condom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is. It's like, you know, one thing leads on to the other, mate. You're, look, you can you can have your opinion. You can make that stand. No one, I mean, yes, people will have a go at you. They'll have a pop at you. You've got to be thick-skinned enough to take that. But in the end, you've, you're going to suffer the consequences. I think yeah. that's, that's the bottom line. Eh? You're going to suffer the consequences for it. That's what he's done. I mean, in some ways, I mean, I don't admire the guy's stand. I think he's an idiot, but that's my my personal opinion. But in some ways, you gotta you do gotta say, you know, standing up for what he believes. I mean, that's his right. You know, it's his yep. right. It's his individual right. Um, the problem I've got is when people with a billion Instagram followers and are so they're influential on people that don't know, you know. Oh, so exactly. that's what that's what pisses me off. And uh 
you know, when there was, a, I, I saw on the news last night, there was a mayor saying, I'm not getting vaccinated until a mayor down line. I'm not getting vaccinated until this um, different types of vaccination comes in. Fine to have that view. Fine for you to be mayor, but just don't go broadcasting yeah. that view. You know, I just think it's irresponsible. And um, yeah, I, I just think he's going to suffer the consequences for it now. You know? Yeah. I mean, there are people who, um, who I'm just trying to word this the right way. So I don't, yep sound like a um <laughs> yeah like a, a vax attacker some yeah. Kind. yeah um, basically what i'm trying to say is i think yes it's all very well having your own moral values and you know being having having integrity as one of your core values and being principled mm -hmm. which is great for yourself mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. um but when it comes to affecting others whether it be family friends you know it's the it's rest of the world get down off the high horse <laughs> yeah just let your principles just go to the side for a, a for two minutes and just get vaxxed for the sake of other people all mm. these people like irving saying he's not anti-vax he's doing it as his own protest because people are losing their jobs because they're not getting vaxxed well that's their problem it's not yours you know mm. yeah it's all very well to to, to stand up for other people but on this occasion why don't you stand up for other people and get yourself vexed so absolutely you're safe and the people around you are safe so. absolutely mate it, there's a thing called the greater good right yeah you know, where everyone should just be doing their bit for everyone else and um i just think you know nine out of ten of us have got it nine out of ten of us have got mm. it one out of 10 of us has gone down a deep rabbit hole on the internet and found out a million reasons not to get it done, you know? And it's just, you know, but when it comes to common sense and you look all around you and you look at the people you love and you look at your friends and your family and all that sort of thing. And you think you're vulnerable, you know, people, yeah. people are vulnerable. Do it for them if you can't do it for yourself. So, um, yeah. And if you don't uh, suffer the consequences is the bottom line. I mean, you will suffer yeah. consequences, whether that be economic consequences, social consequences, um, employment consequences, whether you'll be able to travel, there will be consequences attached to it. Um, get vaccinated. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's a uh, super Saturday this weekend, isn't it? Where there's a big super push Saturday. around New Zealand. So and, if you're not vaccinated and, yet, go and get yourself jabbed. Absolutely. In Auckland, they've got all sorts of things going on. I think Sky at Sky City Casino, you can go in there. They're aiming to get a thousand people vaccinated in a thousand minutes. So one vaccination every minute. You drive your car in, you sign a thing. You don't even have to get out of your car. They do it in your car. Take your whole kids, get it all done on the one day at Sky City tomorrow. I think it's running from about 8.30 till 6.30 p.m. tomorrow in Auckland. Get it done. Get vaccinated. We've got to get it up, man. And once we're up to 90-odd percent, past 90 percent, We'll all be able to go out and enjoy those freedoms again. So just get it done. And sport will be back on the agenda. We'll have more to talk about locally. This podcast especially. is brought to you by Getting Vexed. We are completely not by sponsored the New either. Department of Health. <laughs> That's right. It could be. We, we, we deserve the sponsorship dollars, but we are unsponsored. Quite Although right. we are vaccinated. Anyway, on to better things. What's yes. uh, Lisa Carrington up to? Well, Lisa Carrington, of course, she's our most successful Olympian now. Uh, she uh, signaled her commitment to compete at a fourth Olympic Games. And this is great news because um, we were great talking about news, this. Yeah. I, I honestly thought uh, she'd retire. What she got to prove. Uh, the three-time Tokyo gold medalist posted a picture to social media saying the next adventure awaits, Paris 2024. Uh, it was speculated before uh, the Olympics that she could retire after more than a decade in the sport. Uh, and she said, I don't really want to go back and just do what I just did. So what does that mean? She's going to win six I, Olympic gold medals next time. <laughs> I think probably not uh, compete in that many events. Maybe, where, maybe as, just do a couple. Uh, Guy Havelt said on the show a few weeks ago that, you know, she barely had 20 minutes in between races. I mean, she just showed what a champion she was. I mean, I know that it requires more. So to really have fulfillment and to have integrity, I would need to continue the path of pushing for more, the high expectation, the pressure, just knowing what it takes uh, is a lot and being prepared to do that and figuring out how to, I can channel that will be something to consider since the 2012 Olympics. And this is a great stat. Since the 2012 Olympics, Carrington has been involved in 30% of New Zealand's 17 gold medals. That is incredible. So one, yeah. almost one in three of the gold medals we've won 
since in the last 10 years have been won by Lisa Carrington. That's the sort of athlete she is. Great news for New Zealand sport, Lisa Carrington to continue on. Absolutely. Yeah, I and I don't care how, how old she is in Paris. She, she'll still win whatever she goes in. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, she could she could swim. She could she, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the woman is just a, a fair dinkum champion. I, I, I would quite like to see her go to the Olympics and not, I mean, you know, how old is she now, mate? How old is she? She's mid 30s? Early 30s. Early 30s. Well, so she might even have a say she was, she'll be 20, 30% of the Olympics, uh, 2024. So she's three years away. So she'll be mid 30s by the time she can yeah, be 34, I think. Yeah. 35. That's a long time to be an elite sport. Um, four Olympics is a long time. And if she if she actually managed to pull off a gold medal, uh, four gold four gold medals in four separate Olympics. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's um that's a, there you go. She's 32 now. Okay. So she'll be 34 at the next next Olympics and 38 at the Olympics after that. <laughs> <laughs> no Lisa, pressure. No, no pressure at all. Not from the Hot Air Sports Podcast anyway. Um, no, absolutely fantastic. Uh, great news for New Zealand sport and great news for Lisa Carrington and all the fans of her. I uh, can't wait to see her compete again. Yes. Now, um, I didn't see the fight myself, but I saw the fight um, on the, the news highlights. Yeah. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder fought out an instant heavyweight boxing classic, wasn't it? It was a classic, mate. The two heavyweights slugged it out in an instant classic that had boxing fans of all ages raving about a clash that will go down as one of the best in history. I'm saying one of the best because some people Thank are you. saying the best. I know. I'm sorry. It's nowhere near some of the I, Muhammad Ali fights. I can't believe they're saying this. <laughs> Honestly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, he maintained his undefeated record by recovering from two knockdowns before flooring his, um, Deontay Wilder in the 11th round. It was a great fight. Now, I'm he uh, afterwards, uh, Tyson Fury said, I know I'm the greatest heavyweight in my era, without a doubt. Number one, he is he is box office, isn't he, mate? He's great yeah. fun. He's great fun to listen to. Um, and uh, what do you think, mate? I mean, obviously, uh, Bob Arum's come out and said he thinks it's the greatest fight. I mean, Bob Arum, I don't think he can remember what he, what he did last Tuesday, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I mean, the guy's a little bit uh, brain dead, to be fair. Um, but he does have a big history in, in boxing. A lot of people, uh, I, I, just the just the stuff that was coming out on social media after, uh, you know, an hour afterwards, greatest fight ever. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I'm, I'm prone to hyperbole myself sometimes. You may be, you may, you may be amazed. To, uh, to, to, not to at learn. all, Aaron. Not at all. <laughs> but um, I just think that's going way too far. Let it all digest. I mean, the, the thriller in Manila, the you rumble in the oh, jungle. Absolutely. Was, I mean, um, even some of the, even when uh, Holyfield fought Lennox Lewis, one of that yeah. one, of, and, and Riddick Bowe had a couple of great fights. I mean, I just think we've got to let these things, you know, a little bit of distance. I think recency bias is taking us over, mate. It's a bit like when the um, whoever's closing the Olympic Games always says. The this great... was the best Olympics ever, <laughs> without fail. I don't think they said that at Japan, though. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> These are the shittest Olympics ever. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fight was a good fight, though. It was worth watching, but it, it did get me thinking. Also, um, the size disparity between these guys compared to Muhammad Ali. Now, Muhammad Ali was about my—I think he's six three, six four, about my height. Yeah. Um, about about Joseph Parker's size, right? You see Joseph Parker standing next to Tyson Fury. Yeah. He looks tiny. I mean, Tyson mm. Fury's six eight, six nine. He's a huge man. So it it does get make me think. You know, would some of those smaller heavyweights uh, be able to hold it with a massive man like that? And and mm. who knows whether they would. But to my mind, I mean, maybe it it's. You know, there is a thing called recency bias when you've just seen something and you think that's the greatest. But but maybe I've got something called um, history bias where yeah. you know I think of I think those we both things, do. I, I think of those things that the I, I watched them on a grainy black and white TV you know in the middle of the night or something I think that was the best I, I'm never going to see better you know yeah. and you see see it now and you think maybe it wasn't quite that but um yeah he's no no Muhammad Ali Tyson Fury no no and the the thing that amazes me he. He's not exactly, he doesn't exactly look like an he's athlete, uncle, does he? he? He looks uncoordinated when he fights as well. He's sort of, he's yeah. just hard to hit because his arms are so long and he's sort of doing this. 
No, he's and not. He's, he's, he's certainly not the sweet science. Even at his fighting shape, he's still got a bit of a oh. beard out there as well, and and the man boobs. And... <laughs> Absolutely, the boobs. <laughs> yeah, the boob. I know he doesn't look like it, but he's um, yeah, he's, he's definitely got guts, mate. He's definitely got oh, guts. Yeah. I'm not, talk, not talking not, about what's around here. I'm talking about his heart. You know, yeah. he's, not a bad singer he, either. Um, no. <laughs> Oh, I've heard better. Um, yeah. no, the thing is, I mean, the thing is, uh, he did get knocked down twice. You know, that's the yeah. thing. He's got so much ticker. He gets knocked down. He gets back up. I think Deontay Wilder must have nightmares about knocking the guy down and him just coming back and get him, get him back up every time. But um, Tyson, it was a great fight. It was a great fight. But um, greatest yeah. of all time, don't go there. Yeah, no, not greatest of all time. Definitely nah, not. No. Nah. Um, yeah, as, as you say, the rumble and the jungle and the thrill, thriller oh. in Manila. Um, oh, absolutely, and then and then, and then those are heavyweight fights. I mean, you know, then you go back to the, the you know when you had when you had um, uh, you know Sugar Ray Leonard oh, and Roberto Duran and Tommy oh, Hearns. Oh my God, a marvelous Marvin Nagler. Yep. Those four guys, they were just phenomenal. I mean, there's a great documentary that's just recently been on ESPN about the four kings. Those four guys, mm. fantastic documentary about. Um, the lives those four guys led. Um, that was the golden age of uh, middleweight boxing. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. I love that. Yeah. No, boxing's definitely not the same it was um, oh, 20, 30 years ago. Nah, nah. Okay. Way, way more pure back then. It was. It was. Yeah, you know, there was still, Don King was still involved. But <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so when we say pure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The boxing itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sport itself. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not the decisions. <clears throat> Yes, well, there are uh, big issues, just the three of them this week. Um, I'm sure we'll be back with plenty more in uh, future podcasts. But, Absolutely. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a quieter week on the sports front with uh, without the Premier League and, and uh, no local no footy up here, games and, no local rugby. Um, if yeah. you, by the way, if you guys, uh, if you're watching this podcast and you've got any big issues that you want us to discuss, uh, mm. please send them through in a comment and uh, we'll be more than happy to discuss them. Quite right, quite right. On to football. As I just mentioned, it's International Week with World Cup qualifying and friendlies going on. Uh, your favourite manager, Gareth Southgate's England, had a 5-0 win against Andorra and a 1-1 draw against Hungary. They didn't play very well in that game, I didn't think. They were. Uh, with wins against Albania and San Marino in their final two games will be enough to take them to the World Cup in Qatar in 2022. It will. Scotland also had a successful period. Um, two with wins over Israel and the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands. The 29th that is, minute. They squeaked uh, that one. That game. <laughs> the Israel game was great, though. Did you watch the Israel game? I did. I did. Last I minute McTominay the, uh... goal. They they went crazy after that. It happened. Oh, didn't they just? <laughs> it was like they'd won the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, but um, I would love to see the Sweaty Sox uh, go to Qatar. I mean, it's not a World Cup without the without the jocks of the World Cup. And yes. uh, so we haven't had a real, real World Cup for 20 years because they haven't been there for a long time. Well, they're in prime position to uh, to, to make the at least the playoff. Well, they can't win the group. Um, yep. but they I think Denmark the, have got uh, that, haven't they? They've got Moldova and... Uh, Moldova and... Denmark. So if they they just need a result against Moldova, yeah, and they're confirmed in that playoff spot. So uh, that would be good for the Sweeties. Absolutely. They, uh, and what? Yeah. Currently... And like and like you say, England. Uh, that it was impressive. Five 0 win against Andorra. That one all draw. That was. Um, what's going mm. on with Harry Kane? <laughs> Can't yeah, score a goal um, for England or club. He's not a happy man at the moment, is he? I wouldn't have him in the England squad, but uh, Gareth. Uh, Gareth Southgate's got other ideas. <laughs> I, I think there's at least four or five you know, English strikers at the moment that are in better mm. form than Harry Kane. But obviously, Harry Kane's the captain. He's not going to drop him, is he? So, um, no. Yeah, uh, that was just a, a, a yeah, that was just a average game, one all. Um, the what do you think of the penalty shout? Did you see the penalty shout? Yeah, I thought it was a penalty. So did I. I heard them yelling and screaming about, oh, high boot move. I always thought a high boot in the area was a penalty. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so but... yes, uh, Scotland are currently four points ahead of Israel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just a win in that second last game and, against uh, Moldova the will put them on 20 points and they can't be caught. So, uh, and there's some like... good, there'll be some good teams in those playoffs, though, mate. So, uh, oh, absolutely. I was just um, looking through the tables the other day. You know, you've got place teams. Um, 
Group A, it's going to be either Serbia or Portugal. Yep. Um, Spain's currently sitting in second place in their group. Um, mm-hmm. Will possibly overtake Sweden. You've got Italy and Switzerland locked on 14 points in Group C. Uh, France, um, them and Ukraine, there's only three points Ukraine. separating them. Yep. Uh, Belgium looks to have Group E tied up. Uh, so that's going to be probably either the Czech Republic or Wales, uh, currently on the same points. Wales, Imagine Wales playing Scotland. Game in hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I say, Denmark have got uh, Group F wrapped up. Um, Netherlands and Norway have got, uh, they're only two points separated by two points. Uh, Russia and Croatia, one of them is going to end up in the playoffs. Uh, England and Poland, well, England seems to have, they just need one more result to wrap up their group. Uh, yep. Poland will finish second in that group. And you've got the Germans, the only actual ones that have qualified already after uh, eight rounds. They're in, and it looks like Romania or North Macedonia could finish Second well, North Macedonia group. beat Germany not that long ago, so they're not a bad side either, mate. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's that's like, the irony. North Macedonia are the only team to take points off Germany in that group, and Germany have already won it. They won their other seven games. And so what it's uh, what we're basically saying is, um, even if the uh, Scottish do make it through to those playoffs, there's some bloody good teams in those playoffs. So uh, home and away, uh, it's uh, it's all it's all to play for. Mm. Um, in other football news, mate, world champions France came from behind to beat Spain 2-1 in a tightly contested Nations League final uh, with goals to Kieran Benzema and Kylian Mbappe. Although the first goal to Mbappe, did you see this goal? He was so far offside. Um, yeah. he, was bas- he was basically offside. A through ball was played. Eric Garcia, the Spanish defender, tried to intercept the pass and it just nicked him. Yeah. And because it nicked him, uh, this is the rule. It's a new phase of play, apparently. Uh, and so yeah, Kylian Mbappe is instantly I onside. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What'd you make of that? Uh, so the ruling, the law itself, I'll read the ruling out okay. for you. Read the ruling. A player in an offside position receiving the ball from an opponent who deliberately plays the plays, it says plays the ball. I thought it said plays at the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, including by deliberate handball, is not considered to have gained an advantage unless it was a deliberate save by any opponent. Come on. This, this is sounding like a rugby rule. It is sounding like it's deliberately uh, undeliberative. It's deliberately... If know, Y equals MC squared and <laughs> O equals P plus Q... And the pyre comes in at the appropriate angle to the hypotenuse of the ruck, then and determined later. on the law of uh, look, the if it had a, he was offside. He was offside. I Give mean, me right. Uh, look, and, and then actually, I heard Eric Garcia apparently argued with the ref afterwards, and the ref said, Well, you shouldn't have played at the ball. And he was like, Well, I'm a defender. Why the what do you expect well, me to that's do? That's what he was told by the by the referee. He said, Well, you shouldn't have played at the ball. The guy was offside. I mean, that is what a defender is paid to do, intercept the ball. So uh, yep. don't do what is completely natural. It's like yeah. jumping. Don't jump with your arms out. <laughs> or in Geordie Barrett's case, your feet up. Yeah, and don't run with your arms like this. Run with them with your arms behind <laughs> your back. Honestly, honestly, I think um, basically, yeah, a limbless person would be fantastic at football, wouldn't they? No arms at all. So that's what you really yeah. need. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, players, you need to put your arms you're, inside your shirt. You want to take this game super seriously? We're amputating your arms. Yeah. You want to be a professional? <laughs> <laughs> we can't take any risks. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry, mate. Is... New, news just through. Yes. Um, Kyrie Irving is getting his arms amputated so <laughs> he can't have the vaccination in his arm. <laughs> Oh, good work, mate. Good work. I oh, love it. Uh, congratulations, anyway, to uh, France. Uh, 2-1. They are the world champions and the nation leagues. Oh, they'll uh, be celebrating that title for years to come. Mate, they are just such a good football team, though, aren't the they? The Nation's League. The Nation's Woo-hoo! League. Ask me in... Uh, ask me... In three start, weeks. Yeah, three <laughs> weeks. He's won the Nation's League. Yeah, exactly. Who won the first Nation's League? Uh... France? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it was last year, either. was it? Was it last uh, year? Two years ago. Was it two years? Uh, 
Was it France? I know England made the semis. Yeah. Who'd they make the semis against? Can you remember that? No. <laughs> Jeez, we're experts. <laughs> I think it might have been Portugal. Oh, it was Portugal. It was. Portugal won it as well, didn't they? Did they? They, they won the whole thing. Yes, they it did. It was played in Portugal. I yeah, know no, Portugal won the whole thing because I remember Ronaldo. Oh, there you go. We did yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> we got there in the end. Right. Well, the New Zealand men's football team. Yes. Um, are we allowed to call them the All Whites? I don't think so. I think that's racist. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, we'll just. Uh, we'll um, anyway, just... they had their first games in over two years, and without New Zealand, their New Zealand and Australian based players grabbed two wins against. And now I've got to say this properly because Haley Holt made a. Oh, what did you say? What did you say? Uh, well, they play. They beat Curacao two one. Yeah, Curacao. Yeah, how did you say uh, with, that? Bill Tui Loma and Chris Wood scoring. Um, Haley Holt, we love you dearly, Haley. But what you say? Please pronounce names properly. Uh, they played a team called Karatcha. <laughs> Karatcha. 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 Uh, anyway, and they beat. Bahrain. I wonder who put it wrong because someone would have. Someone would have said, "Look, no, this is how you say it." Yeah, <laughs> but she said it two nights running. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, that's. Terrible. That's, That's terrible. almost as good as McLean Park. Uh, <laughs> almost. Almost. Anyway, the second game, uh, they beat uh, Bahrain. That's a, gr- a very good result, yes. actually. And the goal it scorer was. was none other than Nico Kerwin, son of yeah. uh, the great yes. Sir John Kerwin. So, um, yep. Um, Nico Kerwin, he's got one up on his dad. Bet he never scored a try against Bahrain. No, um, he did. So, yeah, what <laughs> I, th- I thought... Uh, I didn't see the Bahrain game. I heard it was a bit of a uh, bit of a bore draw until it Nico was. popped up with his header. Yeah. Um, and the Curacao game, I thought we played very well, um, mm. and they had some good, some very good players in this side. Although the uh, the keeper made a couple of blues, but yeah, um, yeah I Curacao ranked seventy sixth, Bahrain ninety first, New Zealand are one hundred and twenty first. But we all know the reason. Why we're 121st? Is we don't play any don't games. Play any bloody games? <laughs> well, we've just beaten two teams that are, are significantly ranked significantly higher than us, so that should count, whether it will well, or not. I mean, uh, who knows? Move us up a few um, yeah, you're right, mate. That first game, I thought they played really well. They played nice football. They passed mm. the round. They um, they 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 did. They they took the game to the Curacaoans. Uh, <laughs> if that's a word. Um, yeah, they did. They they played from the front foot. They didn't sit back. They didn't play a low block. They actually tried to play. The second game, I missed uh, most of it. I only turned it on about 15 minutes to go watch the last 15 minutes, and we were all over them. We were the only team playing any football. Um, and uh, the goal came was quite an interesting one. One of their players took a dive, and Chris Wood yes. just looked at him disgustingly, passed it to... Uh, who was it? Our left... Louis Kikachi. Louis Kikachi on the uh, left wing, and he... Pinpoint cross, wasn't it? Beautiful cross. We're on an absolute plate. Yeah, to the far post, and he just nodded it in. Beautiful header. 1-0, thanks for coming. And Danny Hay on the sideline giving it that. He was giving it that, wasn't he? (laughs) (laughs) That was good to see. And, um, yeah, two wins by our national football side. Nothing to be sneezed at, mate, especially uh, when we don't get any football uh, at all. So two wins. Two wins in a row. We're going for three next time we play. We're on a roll. We are definitely on a roll. Two out of two. Now, uh, this, yeah, we touched now. on it last week um, yeah. with the, with you know the uh, Mr. Steve Bruce. So, uh, yes. what's happening up in Geordie Land? Man, uh, it's all happening in Newcastle United, isn't it? The ta- the takeover has now been completed, and they are now officially the world's richest football club. Um, I did see a um, I did see a uh, a graph which had. Newcastle United is a big circle and all the other football teams inside it. So basically, Newcastle United are richer than every other football team in the world put together. Uh, although, that's how rich Saudi Arabia is. Do they yeah. own Newcastle United? Not supposedly, but um, I think they do. Um, yeah, so the memes have begun. Yep. Uh, some of the memes are pretty hilarious, like uh, women have instantly been banned from St. James's Park. And I told... I to- <laughs> What was it? I um I told them to go out and buy me a new castle, and he, I ended up with this football team. And <laughs> <laughs> there's all sorts of memes. Um, so who are they going to sign, and who are they going? Who are they going to sign to avoid the drop? Because obviously they're not going to be able to sign those grade A superstars until they get Champions League football. Great. First thing they got. First thing they got to do 
is avoid the drop and not be playing in the championship next year. Uh, so there've been talk, uh, John Stones on loan, Raheem Sterling, uh, Lorenzo Insigne has been mentioned, Felipe Coutinho, uh, Brendan Rogers is also firmed as uh, the latest in the manager's position. And uh, Steve, and our, uh, our very own um, Stevie Gerrard has also been mentioned in dispatches as well. Yeah, I've seen that. And I just saw this morning that um, Brendan Rogers is likely to snub the Geordies okay. um, as he apparently is being lined up uh, for the Man City job when Pep leaves at the end of the 2023 season. Yeah, interesting. So, yeah, I just uh, just read that this morning. Okay, so, um, um, but, but yeah, Brendan Rod- Gerrard would, would be interesting. I'd be interesting to see him in the manager's dugout um, against when Liverpool. They play Liverpool. <laughs> mm. um, I suppose it is an in between step for him. I mean, if he's ever going to manage Liverpool, maybe there is an in between step between Rangers and Liverpool. I mean, Newcastle significantly bigger than Rangers, but smaller than Liverpool, so maybe he could get some experience there. It could be good for him. I, uh, even even if Brendan Rodgers says that he's been lined up for the Man City job, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up for Newcastle. Mate, he's mm. he is he is one of those guys that just seems to. Well, he's he's not the one saying it. Obviously, it's yeah. it's media speculation. Yeah, um, that he's being lined up by Man City. I mean, okay. he, he's not going to come out and say that. Uh, <laughs> no, um, he's I've, a very proud man. Very proud, proud, proud. Um, yeah, I think they'll write him a blank check, whoever it is, mate. So um, yeah. either way, uh, Steve Bruce, you're gone, mate. You're gone. It's quite funny listening to all well, the players. You know. <laughs> quite funny to listening to all the players uh, sort of saying, oh, it's so exciting. And you're thinking, why is it exciting for you, mate? You're not going to yeah, be here next year. You're not going to be there. I don't, I don't know <laughs> why they're so excited, but um, there you go. It's, uh, it's exciting times at Newcastle United, for sure. Uh, Premier League's back this weekend and... Uh, Couple of big games. Man United are traveling to Brendan Rogers Leicester. Uh, David yep. Moyes returns to Goodison with his West Ham to take on Rafa and his Toffees. Spurs travel to St. James Park to take on the world's richest club. And <laughs> Liverpool travel to Vicarage Road to take on Watford. In the Tinker Man, Claudio Ranieri's debut debut game as manager. Sounds like Liverpool will be without Brazilian stars Allison and Fabinho, although I see this morning they're uh, renting a plane along with Man City and Man United to get their uh, get their players. And back I think weather. they're flying them. And I think they're flying them to Spain, so they don't have to do the quarantine or something. Oh, okay. They, because if they fly them directly from Brazil to to the UK, they have to do ten days quarantine. So they fly them from Brazil to Spain, and then Spain to. All oh, righty, <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing things by the rules. Yes, quite right. <laughs> um, looks like Tiago is still ruled out with. Looks his like calf it. injury, although yeah. the, on the good news, Trent Alexander and Diogo Jota are all available for selection, as is the Ox, yeah. who celebrated the birth of his first baby last he, week. Absolutely. I would his suggest baby, our, our midfield will be uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Henderson, and Nabi Keita will probably be our midfield. Yes. Well, that was the good thing about Henderson not being picked by England in either of those two games. True. Is that he's had a... Uh, He's had a bit of a break, so he'll be yep. coming back refreshed. Um, um, big game against Watford. We've not traditionally done well there over the last sort of four or five years. And they've got a new manager bounce too, so I'm not feeling too... Uh, also, another big game is Chelsea going to Brentford. Um, mm. We struggled at Brentford. I'll be interested to see how Chelsea go yes, uh, in the game. late afternoon. Our game is the early game, so it's a late night game, 11.30 p.m. on a Saturday night. Nice time for the Liverpool game uh, for me. I might have to stay up late tomorrow night and watch that one. Yes, quite right. And uh, I see the, uh, the Phoenix named their first two first coach signings of their women's team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gemma Lewis will take over as head coach for the Wellington Phoenix women's team that will play in the W League, although it's not called the W League now. It's no. called the A-League Women. I like that. I like the fact they're doing that. Um, calling it the A-League Women so that not to demean it at all. Um, yeah, what do you know about her? Becca, do you know anything I about her at all? Do you not, know anything don't about, know um, a single thing. How many... Her. How many teams are going to be competing in that women's uh, A-League? I think it's 10. 10 teams? I think. I'm not 100% sure. Um, But the uh, Wellington Phoenix men's team have also Mm. made a new signing. Matthew 
Bozanovsky. I saw that from, saw uh, from, from Melbourne. Melbourne Victory. Yeah, don't so know anything about him. He will uh, be along. And uh, yeah, so good to see. You. Sorry, Gemma Lewis and Natalie Lawrence will be her assistant at the, uh, at nice. the Wellington Phoenix. So a couple of good appointments there. And uh, of course, good signing for the Phoenix. Absolutely. Go the Phoenix. Time for a bit of rugby. Um, the All Blacks have hit the final third of their three-month rugby odyssey overseas and the inevitable longings from home are starting to sing. The Australian League is now almost over and in their rear vision mirrors with the squad preparing to leave its base in Queensland's Maroochydore. A lovely spot there, by oh, the way. I was going to say, I was, I was and, waiting uh, for you to say that. Maroochydore. Maroochydore. Just up the name. road from Malula Bar. <laughs> lovely. Um, been, been to Malula Bar a couple of times. Actually got friends that uh, live there. Hi, Lisa and Chris. Hi, Lisa. Um, they, uh, yeah, they make their way north where they'll make a test stop over in the US en route to Europe. Uh, they're going to be playing at the home of the Washington football team, FedEx Field and Landover, Maryland. Nice. Yeah, it's a shithole. Is it? Um, last week, coach Ian Foster granted the players who left New Zealand way back on August 26th a week off to rest and recuperate in Noosa before they jump on the plane for the final stanza of their tour. That lull will likely seem a mere blip next week when they touch down in Washington, D.C. and begin their preparations to square off with the Eagles on October 24. Quite a gap between games, okay. isn't it? Especially as they uh, weren't allowed home. And, uh, of course, they will be joined by uh, the two Sams, Whitelock and Kane, uh, Dane Coles and Josh Lord. So uh, mm. good luck to all those guys heading off to, uh, to play over there. Yeah, so they're um, playing the Eagles, and the Eagles have just had a loss, haven't they? Just had a. They're they struggling do, to make the World Cup for next they year. They didn't do too well in their last game. Tell me about their last game, mate. What happened? Well, um, yes, Uruguay. Uruguay. New, new rugby power. Luis and, uh, Suarez in the front row. Overturned a uh, <laughs> yeah, overturned a three point deficit from the first league to qualify for Rugby World Cup. 2000, uh, 2023 as America's won, and they will be playing the All Blacks. Yes. Um, in the same group, outscoring the Eagles four tries to two. They put last weekend's 19 16 defeat behind them to run out 34 15 winners on the day and 50 to 34 on aggregate. Los Terros can now Los look Ter forward to competing in their fifth Rugby World Cup, having previously appeared in 99, 2003, 15, and 19. Uh, USA will play Chile home and away next year for the right to go to France as America's two. Never before have Uruguay won more than one game at a tournament. And their task won't be easy in Pool A, as I said, with New Zealand, France, Italy, and the Africa Cup 2022 winners for company. That's going to be a uh, tough road for Uruguay. It is. It's a tough road for Uruguay, but at least they're there. I'm a bit worried for the US. I mean, what happens if we smash them? If they get a few injuries, they go and play Chile. They lose to Chile. Imagine if Chile made the World Cup. That would be, yeah. I would actually, that wouldn't be too bad. I'll tell honest. you what, when uh, just before Rugby World Cup 2023, and we'll look at the draw and see that Chile are playing Uruguay, we'll actually think we're watching the wrong sport. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They'll be good at kicking goals. I'd, <laughs> so I'd what do you just... reckon? Um, Luis Suarez playing first five and Edinson Cavani on the wing? <laughs> They've had some nasty, nasty footballers in the past, haven't they? You'd think, you'd think they've sort of got the right, you know, they're street fighters, aren't they, the Uruguayans? So you'd yeah. think they've got the right sort of conditioning to be a good rugby team, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, you know, Suarez will add a bit more bite to the pack too. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about uh, thinking about the time Sean Fitzpatrick and at the at the, at the oh, uh, yeah. Athletic Park. When he got bitten by uh, Johan LaRue, was it Johan That's LaRue? the one, Johan yeah. LaRue. <laughs> Johan LaRue, there you go. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Louis Suarez, he could be, could be right, right at home in the front row of a rugby test for sure. Yes. Uh, former All Black uh, forward, Liam Squire. This is interesting, isn't it? He's yeah. uh, been forced to permanently hang up his boots. Uh, 23 tests he played. And he was coming into his own as the, uh, mm. I thought, the first choice uh uh, first choice, um, loose head, um, uh, sorry, blindside flanker. He yeah. was, he was, he was really was. He was very robust, raw boned, 
type player. Uh, but he's called his immediate retirement from all rugby due to a reoccurring knee injury. He also had uh, problems with concussion. It ended his professional career at just 30 years of age. Uh, last year, he had knee and hip surgeries before signing a two-year deal with the Highlanders, returning early from a stint in Japan with the NTT Red Hurricanes. He only managed a couple of brief appearances with the Southerners in the opening two rounds of this year's uh, uh, Super Rugby Aotearoa before re-injuring his troublesome knee and being sidelined indefinitely. Go well, mate. Go well. He was a lovely uh, a lovely yep. guy. I've heard him talking as well. A real uh, down-to-earth type of guy. Had one of the ugliest hair cuts you've ever seen on All Black. <laughs> but uh, no, go well, Liam Squire. He was definitely retirement. a uh, business at the front, party <laughs> at the back. <laughs> he was, um, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was seen as the heir apparent to Jerome Kano, wasn't he? Mm, he when was. he, uh, he burst onto the scene, but Yep, those recurring uh, injuries and then the uh, the head issues, uh, such a shame. Absolutely. Um, you know, he was. we were hoping he was going to get called into the, the Rugby World Cup World squad Cup. for 2019, but that never happened. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's such a shame. It's, it's always a shame when you see players that are forced to retire early due to injuries especially, or head Especially when they don't quite reach their potential. Mm. You know, 23 tests. I mean, he could have played 100 if he was fit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, just really sad, really sad. Um, but I guess, you know, you can't stuff around with knees, hips, and heads, mate. I mean, yeah. those are things that you need for your rest of your life. You've got plenty of years to live, mate. So go well. Go well. All right. Uh, Wales Kiwi coach Wayne Pivak has recalled New Zealand Gareth Anscombe to his 38-man squad for their upcoming series of internationals. Uh, putting the 30-year-old in line to play for the play against the All Blacks next month. The former Blues and Chiefs back hasn't played for Wales since 2019, when a knee injury put an end to his World Cup hopes. Osprey's Anscombe, who qualifies for Wales through his Cardiff-born mother, unlike Shane Howth's faux <laughs> grandmother, grandmother. Um, is likely to start against the All Blacks on October 31st with regular pivot Dan Bigger, one of several England-based players unavailable for the match which falls outside the international window. So, uh, yeah, Bigger also, he was uh, on the Lions tour, wasn't he? He was. He was a good uh, player. So he um, a, a good... Um, now, the, Nati, I don't know if you heard, but Nati Piro East Coast has named two new uncapped players for their mm-hmm. Heartland Rugby Clash this weekend against Bullet and Ruatoria. You may have heard of them. One of them is named Jose Aguirre. Aha! The other, Ma Nonu. No way! Man, yep. not who's going to play for the East Coast. They'll both uh, be their debut performance for the province. No, and both have been named on the bench uh, <laughs> for, the, uh, for the big clash in Ruatoria. What do they? So what do they promise them? A day. What do they promise them? A, a, a crate of lion red and a and a couple of bags of crayfish. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how awesome! I would love to be there for that. Yeah, Is no, it going to be on just, TV at all? They I put mean, the, uh, I follow a few of the Heartland provinces oh, on, uh, that's so on cool. Facebook, and they they've been putting their teams up. And um, it just I just caught the bottom of um, caught the bottom at the bottom of the page. I mean, um, Jose Aguirre is actually from Gisborne around there. He is from he? Up so there, I mean, he's way, probably he actually from there. Uh, I don't think Martin Nonu is. <laughs> no, I think he's probably just playing playing with his mates. He's from Rongatai, mate. <laughs> Rongatai, there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh man, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. Oh, more, more, please. More ex All Blacks turning out in the Heartland Championship. More of this, please. Quite right. Quite right. Uh, NPC this weekend <laughs> we've got. Uh, Northland playing Otago. Uh, Northland Waikato. playing. <laughs> Sorry? A Northland still playing. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they uh, lucky? Yep, they're, they're, yep, I think they are. Well, it's, it's in Whangarei, so it um, mm. hasn't got cancelled next to it. Uh, okay. Waikato hosting Taranaki. Uh, Canterbury hosting the Ranfurly Shield holders Hawks Bay. And Manawatu playing Wellington. Uh, while on Sunday, Tasman will host Bay of Plenty. Of course, those... Uh, Three Auckland sides are now out of the competition. Uh, leading the way, Hawks Bay is actually at the top of the table. Mm. Um, currently, they're a point ahead of Tasman. So that will be a uh, a huge clash. Okay. On, uh, Canterbury's playing Hawks Bay, not Tasman. No, oh, okay. Um, so then... So, Waikato... so you've got a top of the table clash with the with the top team there? Yeah, yeah. Take them off their perch there, Mecca? Canterbury's only four points behind Hawks Bay, so... Uh, so Relatively more point, top of the table. So more points, but more points at the end of the at the end of the weekend. They'll quite right, quite behind. right. Yep. A disappointing thing for Southland, though, um, in the championship section, they've played 
uh, five games and have only got two points, whereas North Harbour, who's only played two games, is ahead of them on four points. We're not bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take anything, mate, at this stage. Quite right. <laughs> Give us a point for not turning up. Yep. Now, uh, um, so, yeah, that's about it for code. All um, right. A quick uh, quick cricket cross. Yeah, um, mate. The um, ICC T20 World Cup starts this Sunday. Did you know? No. Who cares? Uh, New Zealand naming a very, very strong side. It looks like uh, it looks like our captain, Kane Williamson, may be fit just in time for it. I reckon just sit it out, Kane. It's not really important. Uh, the first yeah. group stage includes teams like Ireland, Namibia, Netherlands, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Oman, Papua New Guinea, and Scotland. And then the big teams enter during the Super 12, which uh, starts on the 23rd of October. You going to be watching, Macca? No. Okay. Oh. That's enough of cricket. I'll be, <laughs> I'll, I'll be sitting with Michael Holding having a drink. Absolutely. Because <laughs> he I won't mean, be watching it either. Can we just can we just get rid of T20 cricket? Oh. I mean, maybe maybe just have the Big Bash. And, Keep um, it for the IPL. And absolutely. The bash, absolutely. That. At international Absolutely. level, just I would I would be more it. interested seeing us play a test, have a proper tour of a some nation, with a you know test in one day is than see this. So, I mean, I know the whole of you know ev- everyone who plays cricket is there, which kind of makes it exciting, I guess. But um, yeah, I agree. Just leave it to franchise cricket. T Twenty is it's just silly. I mean, yeah. if you had have told me, I mean, twenty years ago that the biggest form of cricket that attracts the most interest is 20 overs a side. You know, we used to cancel games when it was 20 overs a side. Not oh, enough look, time, I, mate. Not I enough remember, time. Um, back in, when I first started, uh, when I joined the Paraparaumu Cricket Club, mm. uh, they used to play uh, 40 over games. Yep. And if it was, if the pitch was a bit wet and yep. somebody said, oh, let's, We'll start in a couple of hours and just have a 20 over game. They would have just said, Don't oh, waste stupid. of time, mate. Don't be that's, stupid. That's not yeah. a game of cricket. Not, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's not. It's not yeah. a game of cricket. Um, you know, you've got 11 batsmen. I, I reckon it'd be more of a game of cricket if they only played with six players in the batting side. Yeah. Because then at least there would be some risk, you know? Because yeah. then there would be some, okay, well, I have to sort of play out these over because there's more of a risk. I mean, 20 overs, you can lose a wicket every two overs. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. There's another guy coming in. So there's just so much wrong with T20 cricket. Um, I love the game of cricket, but T20 turned me off it rapidly. Right, um, we've spoken about that for two minutes. That's a minute and a, a minute okay, that's enough. seconds too long. That's enough. Let's go to rugby league, mate, because it's all happening. Uh, in the Dolphins the, are coming. The Dolphins are coming, mate. <laughs> put, put the drift nets out. The Dolphins are coming. <laughs> They finally confirmed that the Queensland base, we gave you the heads up last week, said that um, it was probably likely that the Dolphins uh, would become the 17th NRL team. And so it's come to pass. Uh, they're going to join the competition in 2023. Uh, they were going to retain most of the same identity as the existing club. However, they will not be named Redcliffe, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, they're going to adopt a name to broaden its appeal beyond the peninsula to the northeast uh, of Brisbane. Morton Bay, they could, have, they could have called themselves the Morton Bay Bugs then. Yeah, exactly. They? You know, uh, River City. They could have called themselves the River City Ramblers if they were the oh, River Wanganui's City. Wanganui's the River City. Oh, well, yeah, it can't be River City there. There's Wanganui's already. Or the Sun State. <laughs> sun State Dolphins. Yeah, sun because, State Dolphins. because dolphins and the sun go real well together. Yeah. yeah. The Bugs uh, are good. Um, so th- those are some of the names that have been put forward. Um, the Redcliffe Dolphins were founded in 1947. Uh, they were in the Brisbane first grade competition from 1959. They've won 10 premierships. Uh, notable players from there include Australian stars Arthur Beetson. Artie Beetson uh, came from Redcliffe. Oh, big Artie. And, and uh, Petro Sivitasiva also came. Sivitasiva. Oh, Sivitasiva. Uh, also came from Redcliffe. Uh, it's 35 kilometres northeast of Brisbane. Uh, and uh, they're going to play most of their games at Suncorp Stadium, but Redcliffe has its own 11,500-seat stadium, which is where the Warriors will be playing uh, is, yes. this this year. Um, all I'm hoping is that the Redcliffe Dolphins do not win a premiership before the Warriors. Please, that would, <laughs> that would just do my head in. Uh, and uh, who will be the coach? We gave you the heads up last week. Of course, Wayne Bennett is going to be their first coach. So if you base it around the coach, uh, they probably will win a premiership uh, before the Warriors. 
Uh, they're official, they can start officially talking to 157 NRL players coming off contract this year from November the 1st. So it'll be very, when, uh, very interesting. Wayne, Wayne Bennett was asked uh, the other day how excited he is about joining the new franchise. Bennett replied, yeah, pretty good. I'm over the moon. <laughs> I'm over the moon. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd frozen there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that should be very interesting. Anyway, mate. Um, yeah. You know, oh yeah, a couple of buys uh, for to make it all make the seventeenth team fit in, but it's quite it's quite cool because um, you know they've been culling teams for a few years now, so they have an extra team in and there, and there's plenty of support up there up Brisbane Way. They absolutely love their league up there. So um, good stuff. It'll be interesting to see the Dolphins play the Warriors. Quite right, quite right. Mm. And the Warriors, uh, they've made a signing. They have, mate. Uh, Ash Taylor. Former Gold Coast uh, Titans half on a one-year train and trial contract. Now, this guy was on a million dollars a year with the Titans. He signed a three, four-year contract about four years ago on a million dollars a year. And he had, he didn't cut it. He didn't cut it at that price. A bit like Sean Johnson. Um, all, a lot of flash and dash early on his career talked up about... Um, uh, talked up a lot by some uh, by some league luminaries and sort of struggled to live up to his title and his his pay packet. And um, so I think for me, I think this is a really really good signing for the Warriors, um, especially on a train and trial contract. They picked up Sean Johnson and this guy for less than they had Sean Johnson on originally. So um, yep. I think it's a great deal. Uh, the train and trial deal allows the Warriors to have a look at him during preseason without having to make any formal commitment to a full time NRL contract. Uh, it's significantly less than the $1 million that he commanded, of course, and should put him in line for a bigger offer should they choose to secure him beyond 2023. The Titans uh, released him last year, ending his five-year tenure. He was with them for five years. 114 appearances he played for the Titans. Uh, alongside Cody Nicarima, Chanel Harris-Tavita, and returning stalwart Sean Johnson. That's a good set of halves, if you ask me. Uh, looks likely that we will lose Sean O'Sullivan. He's definitely better than Sean O'Sullivan. So, um, yeah, good news for the Warriors there in the recruitment stakes. And further good news, I'm sure, that uh, that you would have found uh, good. Of course, just not long after we recorded last week's podcast, we found out that the, the Warriors got rid of the thug. Oh, my God. Oh, what can you say about this guy, Kane Evans? Um, I said it after that, after that idiotic game where he got suspended twice and tried Against to... Against the Titans. <laughs> oh, and he was just a dick, really. I mean, look... They were winding them up the whole time. Yes, they were. But you just got to control yourself, don't you? You just got to yeah. control yourself on the field. He was an idiot. I couldn't believe he actually played another game after that, to be fair. I suppose mm. our numbers were dwindling. We didn't have people we could play, but they've cut him loose. Kane Evans, you're gone, mate. You're not going to play for the Warriors again. I doubt you'll be playing in the NRL. Um, I presume he'll be going to Super League. Yeah, oh, that's uh, that seems to be the word. Um, yeah. A couple of uh, RIPs in the league world. Uh, this week, Ray Crunch, uh, yeah. who had been New Zealand's oldest living uh, Kiwi international, he passed away earlier in the week. And yeah. half of the NRL trophy, Norm Proven, sadly passed away. Uh, <laughs> half of the NRL trophy. I thought you were actually talking about the NRL trophy because uh, the oh, Panthers because might got have busted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, uh, <laughs> no poor old no, Norm they... Proven. Um, yeah, great, uh, great player in his day, and and of course the the meaning there is that. He is depicted on the NRL trophy along with who's the uh, other guy? Uh, Proven and Summons. Norm Summers. Norm Summers. No. Um, and they had their arms around each other yeah. after a game uh, way back in the 50s or 60s, covered yeah. in mud. The photo's iconic, uh, amazing mm. photo. And to make, and that trophy, I mean, talk about beautiful bronze work. It, 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 it does. It's a beautiful trophy. Um, and yeah, so rest in peace to those uh, absolute luminaries of the, of the rugby league world. Um, yeah, very, very sad. Both of those guys. Um, and, and on, in honour of Norm Proven's passing, we won't talk about um, what went on with the trophy. No, uh, we after won't. The, uh, oh. After the Panthers won it. And um, Nathan Cleary, a little bit worse for you too. <laughs> He's in yes, hospital at the yes. moment with a broken arm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, partying a bit too hard for the yes, Panthers. Yes, <clears throat> Okay, anyway. we're going to move to the baseball, mate. We said at the beginning Ooh, of the uh, podcast, my God. My God, what a week in baseball. Oh, um, and some unbelievable baseball. Oh, Just incredible. Mate, we talked about it last week, and 
just about all the calls we made went south. You know, it's just yeah, it's so hard to pick, isn't it? Look at those Red Sox. What about those Red Sox? Oh, hey? that, uh, the game, the game four where they oh, came the extra and won one. nine. They never oh. should have had a chance to win it with uh, Kevin Kiermaier had smacked the ball out to uh, to right center field. It's bounced that back was off the wall. Bizarre. Bounced it, back it, off the wall. On the half volley. On the half volley. It's hit Kike Hernandez, the center fielder, yep. and rebounded back over the fence. Yep. Which which I thought which results uh, in what they uh, call a ground rule double. Yeah. Normally a ground rule. But there was rule, already a guy on one on first, right? Yeah, he and when there's a ground rule double, you can only advance two bases. Two bases. Um but the fact is, if the ball had stayed in the field of play, he would have oh, easily easy, got home. Easy. Because he, he ran on the crack of the bat. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the umpires ruled it a ground rule double, which technically is correct. But, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think the rule was written for that specific purpose where the balls hit a player on the bounce from a I don't think and gone, anyone has ever – I mean, I, I was – I'd never seen that. The guys I was listening to had never seen that. Mm. No one really knew what the call was. And then actually, because obviously when they're writing the rule, if you've never seen that, of course you're not writing it for that specific instance. Um, <laughs> for it to actually do what it did for the ball to bounce back, it was actually interesting, wasn't it, for them? They were saying, look, will this lead to guys kicking the ball um, when it's coming? If they can't catch it and it's bouncing off the wall, will they kick the ball? I don't think it'll go that far. I think that'll be hard no, to do. And and Boston is a is a ground that's a wee bit different because where the wall that it bounced off is lower than fence. most yeah. normal home run fences. Mm. Um, because it, they've got the, that's where the bullpens are. Um, mm. And at the at the time it happened, the score was five all. Five all in the thirteenth. In the bottom of the eighth inning. Bottom of the eighth. Thank you. Yeah, and. <laughs> Then Kike Hernandez, the player who the ball had rebounded off back over the wall, he walks it off mm. with a <laughs> home run. With a home run in the bottom yeah. of the ninth inning. Um, it was an amazing game. Just it was an amazing absolutely game. Absolutely crazy. Um, um, and that series, I mean, the the day before, they, uh, was it the day before? Yes, they'd, they'd gone 13 innings. Um, yeah, that was the game the that Red I thought was never going to end. Was, yeah, well, the Red Sox had gone up early in that game as well. They were 2-0 up um, early after, uh, or 2-1 up. Um, well, they each even went 4-2 uh, four, four, up in the fifth. Yeah. And then the Rays came back to level it up in the eighth. And it wasn't until the bottom of the 13th inning that, uh, that the Red Sox uh, finally won. And in the end, it was the Red Sox pitching that got them there. I mean, that guy that yeah. threw the last three innings for... I, Sorry, I don't know his name for the Red Sox, uh, but he was just on fire. He was just in the zone, yeah. and they weren't going to pull him off. They were like saying, "No, he's just going to stay out there till we win this." Um, yeah. It was almost like a finishers' final, wasn't it? That's what I love about the um, the postseason when you get to these must-win games. It's basically all your cards are there, aren't they? The, yeah. Every single card you can pull out of your deck is there. You've got to play the cards when you've got them. It doesn't matter whether there's a starter who's your best pitcher and you want him for the next, doesn't matter. They might not be here tomorrow. You've got to play them. You've got to, you've got to close the with them, you know? Yeah. And it's so cool. It's great to yeah, see. Nick Pavetta was the uh, pitcher you were thinking Nick of. Nick Pavetta, yes. Um, yes. He uh, came in and pitched four innings of it was uh, amazing. relief at the end. Yep. So uh, amazing. Um, so they are perfect. The Red Sox are set up now for a meeting in the American League Championship Series with the Houston Astros. So the Astros, yeah, that's going to be they're the the two teams that won the World Series in 2017 and 2018, and were both penalised uh, for um, cheating. Cheating. So <laughs> yeah, it's the neutral the fan is really going to be about uh, hoping that the National League can put up somebody that's going to beat them in the World Series. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, that it's it's going down to Game 5 today. It is. It is. Um, game 5 today. By the time uh, a lot of people watch this podcast, uh, this series will be all over. But uh, as of Giants-Dodgers right today. 
Yep, Giants and Dodgers. Uh, they will meet the Braves, who, um, contrary to my pick, uh, got through. They beat the Brewers uh, three games to one. That was a really exciting series too. That last game went right down to the uh, to the wire with the Braves winning five four with a uh, Freddie, Freddie oh. Freeman home run in the bottom of the eighth inning. He's a player, isn't he, Mecca? Yeah, hey, he's um, a hell of a player. That was a really good week. game to watch. Actually, I he watched was. the whole game in that. And, everyone um, seems to like that Freddie Freeman. He's he plays first base. Every time someone reaches first base, they everyone some wants to have a chat with him. And when you know, they, yeah, he just seems like a nice guy. I don't well, know. They don't call him friendly Freeman for nothing. Oh, do they? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> it just seems like a, a, a top bloke. Like to have a yep. beer with him. So yeah, as I say, bottom of the eighth inning, he uh, he hit the home run that sent them back to the. Uh, uh, back to the America, uh, the National League Championship Series. So Braves against the winner of this afternoon's game, Giants and the Dodgers. Now, I've got a bit sneaky. I did mention in my bet last week that yes. uh, the Dodgers were good value um, at $3.40. Um, but I decided that um, this series was going to be even. So I might just have to hedge my bet. So I put a few dollars on the Giants as well. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. So what? So what? So what's the bet? Uh, the, I've got the Dodgers at three forty. Yeah, and I've got the Giants at four thirty. The Giants at four thirty. Okay. I like the Giants at four thirty. The Giant. Why? Okay, here's the reason I like the Giants. This is my logic, and it's probably completely wrong. The Giants have been ahead of the Dodgers all year, and they've just been keeping ahead of them all year. Just every time the Dodgers come up and just get to within one game, they win a game, they lose a game, they just haven't been able to get ahead of them. I just yep. think it's going to continue today. I just think the Giants will win that last game and just stay ahead of the Dodgers. I'd love to see it. I don't want to see the Dodgers. Go the Giants. TAB can't pick it today. Today's game, they've got the Giants at 183 and the Dodgers at 192. Yeah, that's just bullshit odds. That's just... They can't um, pick it. No. Um, I mean, the yeah. Dodgers have got their, the both teams have got their best pitchers uh, yeah. on the mounds. Uh, Giants have got Logan Webb, who pitched an absolute pearler oh. in game one. And Get the Dodgers nothing. have got Walker Bueller. Who, yeah. Um, Ferris's brother. Is, yeah, Ferris's brother. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh, uh, and what time does that start? Two o'clock, our time, two o'clock. just after two o'clock. Beautiful. Yeah. So that get in front of. Um, Get in front of ESPN and have a look at that one. Um, and it will be a absolute cracker. Okay, now, so a then we a review of yep. my beloved New York Yankees. Okay, so the Yankees are gone. The Yankees, Yankees got gone. beaten in that wild card game by. Yeah, some team from <laughs> Massachusetts. Yeah. That wear yeah. red socks. So that 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 rubbed out a uh, a pretty uh, I mean they were so up and down this season. Inconsistent would be the word, yeah. wouldn't it? Very, for, for, very for the, inconsistent. I mean, they made some great purchases at the beginning of the year. They picked up some good stuff before the trade line, the trade deadline. Then they went on a big run. It looked like they were going to go all the way and then then couldn't get over the line. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, as you say, I mean, they still won 92 games, which is mm. a... Uh, which is a good season. It's a good season when you look back at it, but it was just how they got. To that yeah, 92. the runs and the it was the, the runs and drops, was thirteen it? wins on the trot, and then mm. nine losses on the trot. Mm. Um, it's just it's not good for for fans' no. um, heart um, consistency. Condition. Yeah, exactly. Condition. exactly. Um, so there's three. I was listening to Michael Kay, who's the Yankees play-by-play commentator on uh, the Yes Network in the states. Yeah, and. He has come up with three scenarios around Aaron Boone, the manager. Yes. Um, he thinks Boone is likely to stay, uh, but coaches will go. And there's rumors saying that three are already um, either gone or about to go. Hitting coach Marcus Thames, his assistant coach and first base coach PJ Pelletier and third base coach Phil Nevin, who some may remember made a bit of an error um, in calling Aaron Judge home in that wild card right. game against the Red Sox when the Yankees were starting to get a bit of momentum and he was easily out at the plate. Um, a Boone has, is seen by many as a bit of a puppet to the analytics department. Um, doesn't tend to manage the game how he sees it. Um, 
basically uh, you'll see certain pitches will be allowed to go a bit extra, like Garrett Cole, the ace, will always be allowed to go uh, over the 100 pitches. Um, but the statistics and analytics say that other pitches, you know, once they reach 78 pitches or 80 pitches, start to tire. So they pull them out, whether they're pitching well or not. Mm. Um, if Boone goes, uh, Michael K believes that they're likely to bring in just another Boone version two, who's just a puppet to the analytics department. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or keep Boone, uh, those two options. If Boone goes, um, as I say, Boone version two, or if they make it, if they have a complete change in philosophy, they could go with an old school manager like Mike Socia, who managed the Angels for 15 seasons, Buck Showalter, who's been around baseball for years, or Bruce Bochy, who won three titles with the San Francisco Giants. Well, it's kind of a common thing at the moment, isn't it? I mean, lots of guys, lots of teams hiring the older guys now. Well, if you look Black at the, um, the the two managers in the yeah. playoffs at the moment yeah. that just played each other, the Houston Astros and the Chicago White Sox, both mm. have 72-year-old managers. That's right. And Dusty Baker and Tony La Russa. So, uh, you know, they've done pretty well this year. Yeah. Um, I know. And the thing, Ricky mentioned it last week too, when we did our baseball special, that analytics are great during the season, but come to playoff baseball, it's a completely different game. It's more about intuition, isn't it? It's more yeah, about it's, feeling it's the game. go home and it's yeah. the, the feel of how your mm -hmm. pitch is going. Mm -hmm. Yes, he normally gets tired at 100 pitches, but... This is the playoff, so the adrenaline's still running, and he could probably go another two innings. Yeah, and that's that's the difference between a an old school manager and a um and an analytics guy. So, yeah, as I who say, who makes the decision? Who makes the decision whether they're going to sack well, the manager? It generally comes down to the general manager. Um, but again, the owner and the general manager will probably make that decision jointly. Mm. Um. The general manager, Brian Cashman, has been there for 20 years. Um, so he's sort of considered part of the Steinbrenner family. Yep. Hal Steinbrenner, the son of George, is now the uh, the principal owner after George passed away a few years ago. Yep. So it's just, yeah. So that's what's going to happen behind the scenes. On the field, um, there's some players they need to get rid of, uh, whether they trade them or just don't offer them a contract. Yeah. Uh, Joey Gallo, who they traded for mid-season. 58 games for the Yankees, 188 at-bats, averaged only 160. 88 times he struck out in those 188 at-bats. 38 walks. His on-base percentage was not too bad. So he was getting on base every third time he got, got an at-bat. Combined with Texas, he was struck out 213 times across the season. And uh, the great Pete Rose made a comment the other day that said... Uh, that Ray Charles wouldn't strike out that much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, cool, Pete. Um, uh, another he's player. Probably, he's probably a uh, almost a, almost the Yankee season and microcosm. Those yeah. stats you you know, he's like great for one week and then he's shit the next week. You know, it's like, yeah. and you just you might get through that way, but you're not going to win anything, are you? Uh, Luke Voigt. He was the home run champ in the short 2020 season. Yeah. Only played 68 of 162 games due to not being able to stay fit. He went on the I was going to say, I've list. never seen him. Play he, he went on the injured list three times this year. So he he started out the season on the injured list, came back into the team, lasted about 20 games, back on the injured list, came back, lasted about another five games, went back on the injured list. So, Six, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aaron Hicks, he only played 32 games this year. Um, has had medium to long term injuries every year of the six years he's been at the Yankees. Unfortunately, two years ago, they gave him a five year extension, paying him $10 million a year. <laughs> so they need to trade Stop him. Um, or he's just going to end up being a bench player. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Sanchez just continues to underwhelm. And yeah. he's a poor he's got poor defense for a catcher. He's just not a catcher. Oh, not yeah, for the very, Yankees. I've just seen him make every time I watch them, he makes mistakes. You know, it's like he's got incredible power. I oh, mean, as a batter, yeah, as, sure. As a hitter. But yeah. even then, it's only like well, he hit 20, 
but, home runs, yeah, 18 yeah. to 20 home runs, but, but inconsistent again, you know, yeah. Um, it's um, a home run or nothing, yeah. Clint Frazier and Miguel Andaha both injury prone and underperforming. Brett Gardner, what can you say about Brett Gardner? He's been at the club for 13 years, he's 100 seasons. years old, that's weird. yeah. <laughs> But he's now 38. He's turning 39 next year. Took half of this year to find to actually get into gear. Mm. He was averaging less than 200 for the first half of the season. So, so who to replace those players? Um, I think they need to try and work out some sort of trade with the Athletics for Matt Olson. He's a left-handed bat with power. He's under. He's still only 28 years old, and he's a fantastic first base defense. Some people. Are saying that the Yankees should re-sign Anthony Rizzo. I was going to say you got Rizzo at first base. Um, but he's a free agent this year, and he's going to cost a hell of a lot more. Okay, but um, I thought I thought he looked. I, come on, he looked. He's, he's a good strikes. player. Don't get me wrong, um, but he's thirty-two years old now, mm. so he's sort of on the way down. Um, you know, he's probably still got another two, maybe three good years left in him. Mm. Um, and also, they need a shortstop. Uh, the experiment with Gleyber Torres at shortstop just didn't work. He made too many errors there, and it affected his hitting. In the last 30 games, when he got moved back to second base, he was much better, uh, and he started hitting again. So hopefully, if they can keep him there. Um, so they need to bring in a shortstop, whether they look at a... Sh- uh, they've got two or three up-and-coming young players in the minor league system that um, will be ready... Definitely not next year, possibly the year after, but definitely in three years. Um, so whether they get somebody like Marcus Simeon, who had a great season with the Blue Jays, he's off contract. This year, he only signed a one-year deal with the Blue Jays. Um, they could get him in for two years. Uh, otherwise, they bring in someone like Corey Seager from the Dodgers. Yeah, yep. He's a left-handed bat, which is great for Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Great average. And he's the type of player that could quite easily shift across to third base. Oh, mate, he's an awesome player. Years. And he's been yeah. injured this year. I mean, yeah, he, he was MVP two years ago. He's just yeah, yeah. He was in the World Series last yep. year. Yeah. Um, and the other shortstop on the market is Carlos Correa from the Houston Astros. Um, some Yankee fans probably won't like Wouldn't the like fact him. that he is from the Houston Astros. But if, they, if the Yankees sign him, those fans need to get over themselves because Carlos Correa is a top quality shortstop. Absolutely. Um, and they also need a centre fielder. And the in-house possibility is Greg Allen, who played a few games this year um, from the minor league system. He hit 270 in the 30-odd games he played for the Yankees this year. So he could be an option in centre field. All right. There we go. I'll fix the Yankees. You have. Um, so what do the Yankees do now? Where will they be? Oh, they will have all broken up. For yeah. um, they're all gone home to their respective home. homes, and yeah. And when does spring training start? Uh, February. Okay, so they so, actually get a decent holiday. Well, well, yes and no. Um, well, they play 162 games during the bloody year. Yeah, so exactly. They so they'll deserve... probably have. They'll prob- those guys will probably have a month off. Yeah. Now because, you know, they're normally involved to sort of middle end October, mm. but they're not this year, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then they'll start doing, they'll have training programs that the club will have given them uh, for the off season. Aaron Boone's sitting at home waiting to find out what his future holds. I mean, he he's technically out of contract once the World Series finishes. Mm-hmm. So it's whether the Yankees give him a new contract or whether they look somewhere else. Um, personally, my choice would be to get in a Bruce Bochy or a, an a, older fella, an older fella, Mike yeah. Sosha. Yeah, <clears throat> somebody I'd like, like that. I'd like to see the Yankees coached by an older guy. I just yeah. think it, it looks. It just and I mean, looks... none of those guys are anti analytics. Yes, they look at them yeah. and take notice of them, but they don't use them as the Bible. Mm. Um, so, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, good luck for the Yankees next year. Got a bit to fix, mate, by the sound of that. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Uh, so we'll be by this time next week. We'll have uh, we'll be bloody close to finding out who our World Series uh, is. Yes, we certainly how long will that be. Um, goes for. Last game of the division series today, as we mentioned, the mm-hmm. championship series uh, will seven begin games. over the weekend. Uh, so they're the best of seven games. So we may have 
one or possibly even two World Series uh, beautiful teams set by next week. But we'll uh, just have to wait and see on that one. All right. Okay. Uh, other stuff, other sporting stuff around the world. Uh, just before I get on to these ones, though, mate, uh, I, I think you've got the good week, bad week. Um, but it is a bad week. I don't know whether you've uh, mentioned, I don't know whether this guy's on your list for the bad week, but it's been a bad week for John Gruden. Yeah. It certainly has been a bad oh, week for John Gruden. I like John Gruden. He's the coach of the um, of the uh, of the Las Vegas Raiders. I, yeah. I have to always think about yeah. who, who, what, what city you put before the Raiders. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders. He's always been such an interesting guy to listen to. He's a great um, uh, guy on ESPN to sort of break down the game and play by play, especially quarterbacks and and all that. I always found him so fascinating uh, to listen to. Uh, with all sorts of weird types of play calls, like Idaho black 75 wide right banana, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I, and I really interesting, but he's been sacked because of a number of emails, yep. uh, misogynistic, homophobic, and um, racist. racist comments made. Um, what do you make of all this, Mecca? <laughs> People don't learn, do they? It was they 10 years ago. Learn. It was, it was 10 years I know ago. It was 10 years ago, but. You know, these sort of things were still high on people's agendas 10 years ago. I mean, yep. it's not like it, uh, it's, you know, we're talking, you know, we're talking 20, 30 years ago with other people. And, yep. Yep. And other people we talk about, like the English cricketer who was, you know, he was only 19 when he made his racist tweet or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Gruden's, you know, in his late 50s, early 60s now. So he was, he knew well enough. Um, yeah. No, you're right, mate. You're right. I mean, that, the thing is, why say these things in an email? What yeah. the, it's just, it's there for all time. I just do not understand. Mate, he's made the mistake. He's paying the price. So that's a little bit sad. Uh, even more sad um, is Kenyan long distance runner, Agnes Turop, uh, two-time world championship bronze medalist. She's been found dead at her home. Uh, mm. Country's Track Federation that said, uh, the Athletics Kenya said on Wednesday that it had been informed of her death. She was 25. She was found dead at their home in, in Itan. She was allegedly stabbed by her husband. We're still working to unearth more details surrounding her demise. Uh, they posted on Twitter and uh, they've said, uh, asked for him to give himself up. So that's absolutely awful news uh, for poor old Agnes, a uh, mm -hmm. long distance runner. And also uh, not such good news for Bournemouth and Wales midfielder David Brooks. He's been revealed he's been diagnosed with stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma. 24-year-old uh, who's been with Bournemouth since 2018 from a move from uh, Sheffield United, withdrew from the most recent Wales squad because of illness and confirmed the significance of it on Wednesday. Uh, he said, this is a very difficult message for me to write. I've been diagnosed with stage 2 uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma and will begin a course of treatment next week. Although it's come to a shock to myself and my family, the prognosis is a positive one. Very confident I'll make a full recovery and be play back playing as soon as possible. Get well soon, mate. That's absolutely yeah. terrible news. Uh, but... The hope is, I mean, obviously he's a very fit, healthy guy, mm. uh, so hopefully he comes through it. So um, he's a top player too. He's he a is a top player. player. I'm surprised. Actually, surprised he's still at Bournemouth. Um, yeah. I thought one of the Premier League teams would uh, would snap him up when uh, when they got relegated. Absolutely, no, very, very good player. I mean, there was talk about him coming to Liverpool at some stages, and um, mm. yeah, I would have loved to have seen it, but he had a number of injuries too. So uh, yeah, yeah, very sad. Get well soon uh, to David Brooks. Uh, shout outs to new friends of the show on Facebook: Chris Shannon, Wang Yishin, and New Zealand Sports Wire. Thanks for liking our page. Yes, make sure you do. New Zealand Sports Wire. We must um, get you guys on our show and do a uh, a joint podcast one day. Cross pod, cross pod. A love cross to do pod, that. Cross pod. Love What's to do this that. week's bit hottier? Sports podcast, best bet of the week. Okay, well, I've been perusing the uh, TAB site as we uh, spoke earlier, mate, uh, about this game. I'm going to go for the Brentford versus Chelsea game uh, this weekend. And I've got the draw at $3.60. I think that's some really good value. $3.60 on the draw. Brentford versus Chelsea. Liverpool couldn't get it done. I don't think Brentford will. I don't think Chelsea will either. Brentford are a top side. I think it'll be a draw. Three sixty. dollars If you want to go... A little bit further, and you think Brentford can win it? Six bucks on uh, Brentford Ooh. taking uh, Chelsea. That is to the good cleanse. value. I think so. Eh? Good money. Yeah, and uh, I noticed uh, the um, on uh, Twitter this morning that uh, Chelsea fans found out that Anthony Taylor had been appointed referee of that Chelsea versus Brentford clash. Happy Anthony Taylor, famous for sending off Reese James a couple of weeks ago. That's so, right. Um, 
of some Chelsea fans not too happy about Anthony Taylor being appointed to their game. Are Chelsea Tough fans luck. ever happy? Are they ever happy? Tough luck, Minces. <laughs> Anyway, good week, bad week. No, it wasn't. Uh, I haven't got John Gruden in there, but uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I did want to talk about uh, that. Good week. Andy Murray, the tennis Andy player. Murray. Good week. Andy, Andy Murray. Um, now, when he plays his games, he takes his wedding ring off and ties it to his shoelaces. <laughs> Trouble was that his latest uh, tournament a couple of weeks back, <clears throat> he was in a bit of a hurry, took his shoes off, put his street shoes on, Walked out, left his shoes under the ta- under the bench in the locker room. Realised what he'd done, went back. Oh no, they're gone. Thankfully, an Andy Murray fan found it, knew the story about how he tied his wedding ring to his shoelaces, and much to Andy's relief, uh, with having to face the wife, of course. <laughs> um, Managed to get the wedding ring back before she found out. So uh, oh, well God. done, Andy Murray. So good week for you, pal. That's very lucky week <laughs> for Andy Murray. Yeah, and you might not. <laughs> he didn't win the tennis game, but he got his wedding ring back. So, but yeah, good week. he didn't. He didn't suffer it from the wife. So good yeah. on Andy. <laughs> uh, bad week. I've gone for the whole uh, uh, for the tennis world this week. Emma Raducanu, her first tournament after winning the U.S. Tennis Open. And she's out in the first round at Indian Wells. She gone. She gone. She, she, oh, she's been partying too hard, mate. That's what it Must is. Have been. She, she's done. She's she's done the old Roberto Duran thing. She thinks she's the champion of the world. She's gone to party <laughs> in Vegas, and she's suffering. She's piling on the pounds, and uh, yeah, no, no, I don't. I think she's just too many late night show appearances with uh, with um, James Gordon and absolutely uh, Allen and absolutely the, everybody does the circuit up. They everyone, the everyone's loving her at the moment. So uh, yeah, she hasn't got time. She hasn't got time for tennis at the moment, mate. No, so, so I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure she's not going to have too many bad weeks. So I thought a better better yeah. Pro, better pop to be fair. There. To be fair, after doing all the press, it's probably a pretty good week for her. Yeah. But I suppose in sporting terms, it's a bad week. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that's another Higher Sports podcast in the can. Great to see all you people. (laughs) Make sure you get onto YouTube, uh, have a look, give us a like. and Subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Yep, get on Spotify, RSS, and all those good things, and check us out. So it's a good life for me. uh, We try and uh, drop one of these podcasts every Friday. So uh, make sure you check in on Friday for the next podcast. And it's a good night from him. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.